Let's see now how cartilage is turned to bone. Let's talk about the endochondral ossification. We already talked about that around week eight or week six, seven, eight, around even maybe week nine, we will already have um, a template uh, that is made out of cartilage. And this cartilage would represent, in this case, uh, most of the bones of the body. So um, in this particular case, this is like a long bone. This could be the femur, could be the humerus, could be any other long bone. So we said there is a, a hyaline cartilage template. Then in the center, there will be appearing uh, something called a primary ossification center, okay, where the blood vessels will be coming and expanding. After that, this expansion would, or this area would keep expanding and forming new bones and new bones and new bones, okay, till it reaches around the epiphysis. This is, uh, will continue from maybe week 9, week 10, all the way till uh, labor, till the baby is out, okay? So all of this process will happen during these uh, 9 months of pregnancy then when the baby is born we will have a really well developed uh, diaphysis that there is already a uh, medullary, uh, medullary cavity okay but also at the epiphysis we will have secondary ossification center kind of repeating the same process that is happened here so we will have a uh, ossification center, we will have osteoblast cells turning into osteocytes and so on. We will have a blood vessels coming and this will continue through the adulthood. Okay, till the, uh, that baby is in early adulthood when bone growth would uh, stop and most of the cartilage will turn into bone. So again, we said around week six, week seven, we will have the template. Around week nine, week uh, around week nine, we will have something called the primary ossification center that would start in the shaft of these long bones. Uh, this primary ossification center would keep expanding and adding new bones through labor till around labor. So we will have at labor, we will have a good developed. Uh, medullary cavity, uh, compact bones, okay, but the epiphysis is still cartilage. Around labor, in the epiphysis, we will start having secondary ossification center, and the entire process happened earlier would repeat itself. And this process, all of this cartilage, will be turning into bone through the uh, early life of, of the infant, of the kids, till around adult, adulthood where most of the cartilage is, turn, is already turned or turning into bones. The only areas that usually would remain with cartilage is the services, the articular cartilage, okay, and this is needed for making the bones, and the epiphyseal plate. Epiphyseal plate would continue to be cartilage till maybe uh, late, uh, adulthood so maybe around uh, 18 19 maybe sometimes 21 still it's there but after that it will turn into bone so that is the all the overall process that's what I you know that's what I want you to understand the overall process without getting into the details of what's happening here and there uh, just understand that we are starting with cartilage that there is primary ossification center in shaft in diaphysis, okay? Then there is secondary ossification centers in the epiphysis, okay? And this process would continue through adulthood. So when the baby is born, we will have a uh, medullary cavity already, but two secondary ossification centers. So now if you have a baby in, in, your, in your family, you will, you know, talk to them, oh, you little boy with two secondary ossification centers. Um, so, and most likely his or her mom will kick you out. Okay, but that is the entire process or that's the overall process of the endochondral ossification. 
However, what I want you to, you know, to also uh, to have a look at is how bone is growing in length. And before we go there, I will play a video using some blocks uh, that would represent this process. And then we will come back to here. In order to understand how bone is growing in length, we will use some blocks. Here, we can think of the green block as uh, the epiphyseal plate. And this epiphyseal plate is producing new cartilage cells, right? And then here we have the bone. So every time the epiphyseal plate is producing cartilage cells, the old cells will be pushed down. Now, when these cells, the old cells, are around the bone, these cells are going to die. And they are going to die and they will get replaced by bone. So I'm going to replace them with bone. And it will keep repeating itself. The mother cells here will produce a new cartilage cells. The cartilage cells would push the old cells down. And once the old cells are around the bone, they will get replaced by new bone cells. And it will repeat itself again. Mother cells producing new cartilage. These cartilage cells would be pushed down. Once they are around the bone, it will replace them with bone. And this process, it will keep happening till the bone is very close to the epiphyseal plate. At that time, and we are talking about age of 18, 20, something like this, all the cartilage would be replaced by bone, okay? And soon, even the mother cells would be replaced by bone. And the bone will be completely calcified, and this is the maximum length of the bone that we can achieve through our life. So we started like with four blocks, and we ended up with like eight. But this represents, to a certain extent, of course, uh, the process of how bone is growing in length. So after uh, done playing with the blocks, let's come back to here. Um, what you are looking at here, all of this is the epiphyseal plate. Okay. And this is the matrix production area. Here are the stem cells that are keep dividing and providing all of these daughter cells. Every time a new line of daughter cells are created, then it means all of these cells are being pushed down. Okay, so they would be pushed down toward the cell death area, the cell uh, where the cells are going to die, mostly because of age. Remember, this process will, will happen over like 15 to 20 years. Okay, so they will die because of age. And every time they are dying, new bone cells would come and take their place. And as we said, every time, every time the bone cells are adding a new frontier uh, and progressing toward the epiphyseal plate. So now all of this, all of these two areas are bone uh, cells or made out of bone. Uh, then this is the new, the new cell death area. Once this is done, then this is the new cell death area and so on. And actually that is exactly what's happening. We will have increased uh, bone moving toward uh, the epiphyseal line till all of this bone arrives at these cells taking over the, the stem cells and taking over the matrix or the uh, cartilage. That's exactly what's happening in the uh, epiphyseal plate, and that's how the bone is growing in length. How bone is growing in, in, in thickness or in width, it's a different, it's a little bit different story. So let's move to here and let's see how bone is growing in width. In order to understand this, let's think of a room. And this room is made out of double walls, okay? Let's say that the thickness of this 
room or this area is around like 10 feet okay now what's happening is that we have here people that are breaking this wall okay so this wall is broken but on the outside we have people that are building a new wall so inside people are breaking and outside people are building so this is one okay this could be now inside walls are done outside walls are there the people inside now are starting to break this wall the people outside they are starting i know these are like very beautiful drawings of people okay they are starting to build a new wall so this is two soon what we will have we will have a room okay that its wall now is this first line okay and we have the second line the people inside now they are breaking this red bone this red wall okay and the people outside they are already trying on their third wall so this is three now these people the people inside they already broke oops not like this the people inside they are already broke the first red line and now they are on the second red line okay so the first one is already gone okay there is one outside but the people inside they are now attacking the new wall okay so this process would keep going people inside breaking wall but every time every time they are breaking this wall there is a new wall after it so they will always keep moving away from the center and this eventually we will have really wider bone comparing to the starting material okay to the starting place why because we kept adding wall okay from outside although these walls are being uh, all, although these walls are being taken one by one but every time it's taken there is a new wall they have to deal with so what are these cells the cells inside these are the osteoclast cells these are the bone eating cells and the cells outside these are the osteoblast these are the bone creating cells so growing in width or thickness or thickness is a delicate process it's a balanced process between osteoclast and osteoplast cells it's a delicate process between the osteoclast and the osteoplast cells if this balance is changed meaning that we have we have more buildings more walls from outside and less uh, breaking of these poles from inside this would mean that there are areas of bones that are thicker than other areas which will put much pressure on the smaller areas or the thinner areas or if we have higher activities of these osteoclasts comparing to the osteoblast it means that we are uh, degrading or we, these cells are breaking down bone faster than the time needed to build the new bones 
which will cause uh, the bone itself to be very weak. So growing in width, it's a very balanced process between the activities of both osteoclast and osteoblast cells. Now, for bone remodeling, this is a lifetime process. It's always happening, even in us as adults. Always our bones are going through remodeling. There is always recreating of new bones, replacing damaged bones, uh, uh, regenerating some of the areas of the bones. Uh, and there are several factors that would enhance or activate the very active uh, remodeling like injury exercises uh, usually they would enhance the uh, remodeling of the bone so i will stop here okay uh, please uh, go over this again uh, write down your questions um, uh, take the uh, the quiz and once you are ready you can come back and see the last part